Hello everyone, today we are talking about the first step in the data cycle, so we're talking about formulating questions. So before we get into that first step, we're going to talk about the data cycle in general, right? So the data cycle is a very real life skill, right? We use this all the time in the real world, getting different data, figuring out how it's useful to us, how, what we can benefit from, right? And how we can use that data to improve our lives and the lives of people around us, right? So the data cycle has these four big steps and we kind of got it in this chart right here. Today we're gonna to focus on the first one, which is to formulate questions to be explored with data. So a lot of times the data cycle starts with a problem, right? There's some kind of problem we wanna solve, some kind of question we wanna be answered. So the first thing is we have to figure out the right question to ask to answer whatever specific problem that we have. And we'll talk about that a lot today. After we have a question, right, then we need to figure out how do we get data to answer that question, right? We'll talk about that in later videos, but just talking about how do we get information um, once we have the question that we know we want to ask. After we've got all of this data, then we have to figure out how to best represent it, right? So we've got all these numbers or all these answers, right? And we have to figure out how to put that into a clear and concise way where we can actually look at it and it makes sense and it looks pretty. After everything looks pretty, then we have the chance to actually analyze the data, figure out what is it saying, and then communicate the results and hopefully figure out how to solve our problem now that we've gone through this whole cycle. So today we are talking about part one of that data cycle, so we're just focusing on how to formulate questions that we can explore using data. So the first thing to know is that there are two types of data that we can get from questions. We have numerical data and we have categorical data. So numerical data, just like it sounds, it's going to give us numbers for answers. So these are values or observations that can be measured. So we've got lots of examples here. What was the average number of texts sent in a day by seventh grade students? What's the average temperature in Virginia Beach in the month of July? What is the average income um, of individuals based on their age? So all of these are going to give us those number answers. Categorical data, though, is a different kind of data, and that's going to give us information that can be sorted into groups um, or different categories. So things like what's the most common type of household pet, right? These are going to be answers like cat, dog, fish, right? So they're not going to be a number that we can use. What pizza topping do middle schoolers like the most? What sport do seventh graders like the most? So you can see that these are all going to be numbers and these are all going to be different groups or categories. In this unit, and so for this specific purpose of seventh grade, we are gonna be talking about histograms. And we're gonna get into what a histogram looks like, how to read it, all of that at a later time, but the important thing you need to know today is that histograms are used to display numerical data. So those are the kind of questions that we're gonna be looking for, are the questions that are gonna give us numbers for answers. So when we're going through this data cycle process, it is very important that we are thoughtful about formulating questions and that we really ask questions that are gonna give us the answers that we want. Let's take a look at some examples. So we have, which of the following questions could be used to construct a histogram? So remember, the histograms use that numerical data, so we want questions that are gonna give us a numerical answer. So first one, what countries outside the US have you traveled to? That's gonna give us categories or numbers, or categories or groups, not a number that we want. What's your favorite subject in school? Again, not something that's gonna give us a number. How many pairs of shoes do you own? This is a good numerical question because everyone is going to answer with a number, right? How many pairs of shoes do you own? Um, next one, what do you prefer? Roller skating, skateboarding, riding a bike. Again, that's giving us a category, but these last two, how many miles do you live from school and how many ounces of water do you drink in a day? Both of those are gonna give us those number answers and so those are numerical data that could be represented in a histogram. All right, the last question we have for this video is we have Central Middle School would like to start a school store. What questions could they ask their students to help determine what items should be sold? So this is an example of a real life problem, right? That a real school could be having. And so we need to come up with a question that we could go through this whole data cycle and we could solve that problem, right? So some questions that we could ask are maybe, what kind of school supplies do students use the most? Or if they were trying to have like school gear, like t-shirts, sweatshirts, um, long sleeves, they could ask students like what their favorite preferred um, item of clothing to wear is. So in this case, you can see that neither of these are going to give us numerical data, so it's not something we'd be using for a histogram, but you can see how we were gonna ask different kind of questions to answer different kind of problems. And that is our big thing for today, is just how to ask and formulate questions to start that whole data cycle process. I hope you have a great day and I'll see you next time.